Hey everyone, welcome back to Anvil of Doom Miniatures, episode four. We did it. We made it to episode four. We're still here. We're still going and I'm very excited to have you all here today. So today I thought I'd do something, um, well, maybe a little bit different, but not really. Um, I thought I would show you guys my journey um, of painting or how, how far I've come in painting in six months. So I'm new to the hobby. Well, relatively into the hobby. Kind of, I kind of know all the lore and all the ins and outs and stuff, but uh, painting, I only started painting about six months ago, um, and I've learnt a lot of things. So this video here is mainly for new painters, uh, but I painted some pretty cool miniatures as well. Um, so if you like old uh, Warhammer Fantasy miniatures, stick around. And I'd just love to take you through kind of my process and, and maybe, uh, maybe one thing I learned uh, per per miniature so that could be uh, you know paints to techniques anything like that I just thought I'd just go through from start to finish and um, take you on my little journey that I've gone through in the last six months of painting so buckle up buckaroos let's get into it you're gonna have to forgive me I can't remember uh, all my miniatures from start to finish so I'll have to jump on my Instagram. My Instagram is down here if you want to give it a follow. Uh, I've got some pretty cool miniatures and some fun stuff there. Model number one. Technically, I did paint something before this, but I'm not going to count it. It was more like a little experiment, not really trying. But anyway, so when I started out, I wanted to paint something classic. And this guy here is a classic. Um, I bet everyone owns this miniature, or most people own this miniature. I've seen this miniature, they've seen it around somewhere. Uh, they probably stepped on it when they were younger, or you know, your parents have stepped on it just lying around. Um, there's probably a few of them with a thick coat of paint lying around somewhere, but they're pretty iconic as well. For some reason, I suck at painting green. I don't know why. Um, people say that white, yellow, and red are the hardest paints, but for me as well, I could add green to that list. I tried to stick close to the box art when I first started and when I first started I really didn't have the concept like you know I read about edge highlighting and stuff like that but it never really stuck with me so I just kind of blobbed on paint. This is my first attempt uh, and painting yellow was pretty hard as well and the face and whatnot. I didn't even know what washes were, contrast paints, what they were and when I came into it I was like oh these are cool and I just started blotching it on. But yeah I think the one lesson I learned from this thing is like you're not ever going to start out how you think you're going to start out. It's always a bit of a mess and a, you know, but take your time and have fun with it. That's probably another good lesson as well for that one. So number two, my second miniature I painted was this High Elf Reaver from the Isle of Blood. I actually um, saw it on Facebook Marketplace and I was like, oh cool, High Elf, and I just bought it. So I've got this guy and I've also got my Reavers from my um, Isle of Blood box set sitting there. So this was a pretty good practice mini um, to start off with. So with this one here, what I learned was experiment and what I've kind of done with that is I've carried that through to the rest of my minis. I've always said maybe I should try something different with every mini. Um, as you can see here I put some um, of the true metallic metals down there and um, yeah you know added some washes, had some fun with it. It was, it was very difficult and it did take me a long time uh, with this mini when I first started out. Fun fact on this one as well, um, I won a competition with it. I entered it in my local games workshop painting competition. So take that 12 year olds. I won, I beat them all, just for you guys. Anyway, uh, let's get into the third mini, shall we? The third mini I painted. So the third mini I painted was actually a batch. I'm gonna count it um, all as, one. Just, I'm gonna count it as one mini, but it was a batch of goblins. Um, it was actually the Battle of Skull Pass uh, mini box with the little paints in it and a paintbrush and 10 goblins. So what I decided to do was I you know, wanted to give a batch paint a go and, and um, have some fun with that. So I painted five of them. I still got five sitting there in plastic, which I will get around to painting one day, but I painted five of them. And um, this was kind of a lesson in, like, I guess, like skin tones and whatnot, especially with the green, because I suck at green. I also took out the dry brush for the first time with these and gave them a little dry brush with um, some gray paint over the black to try to bring out the ropes. So, you know, it was a good little experimentation and um, yeah, also I blocked probably too much, uh, <laughs> too much null oil on the uh, blades, but anyway, it was good fun and it was just fun to kind of wrap my head around batch painting as well. So now we'll move on to the fourth mini I painted and that is my Dragon Prince. Now, I managed to get these off eBay, a set of plastic uh, 
Dragon Princess here, uh, the High Elf Dragon Princess, sorry. This one was a bit of a challenge for me. I struggled. Um, painting blue is another hard color, I guess. You know what, let's just say every color is hard when you first start out. Um, but yeah, I, it was very intricate and stuff and I didn't really know where to put the to put the paint, if that makes sense. So with like the horns and the, the dragon flared helmet, I didn't know where to put the silvers and, and whatnot. So it was just a bit of experimentation and it took me a very, very long time. I think painting horses and then some bigger minis when you're first starting is very, very hard. I wish, you know, actually no, I say I wish I didn't ever painted horses to begin with, but it was actually good to start out this way and really push myself and try to do something different. So we get to another batch paint and I've just got to say, I hate batch painting. Um, it is the worst. I hate it, but I do it. I don't know why I keep doing it. And I don't, you guys probably think the same way. You don't know why you do it either. But um, I got these Phoenix guards, these really old Phoenix guards. I think they're fourth edition. Yeah, fourth edition Phoenix guards. Um, beautiful little models too. And um, all, all, all metal models. And metal models, um, I do find they are a little bit trickier to paint than uh, plastic, but you do get used to it after a while painting with metal models. So what I learned with these ones were was uh, how the kind of the use of um, metallic metals, and I kind of was starting. This is where I started to wrap my head around it. I'm not saying they look good or anything like that. They are pretty rough still, and the metallic metals, you know, the, T, the TMM um, is pretty rough. But um, I slowly started to kind of get my feel for it, and this was kind of like a breakthrough moment with me. And this is what I want to emphasize when you when you do start out painting. And I'm not saying I'm a pro again. I'm not. I've only been doing it for six months. But you have these little breakthrough moments. Basically, you'll be painting, and then something will just click. Um, and you'll go, oh wow, that makes sense. And then you'll carry it to the next mini. And then another thing will click and you'll carry it to the next mini. And I had a few breakthrough moments with these minis. Uh, these, these were kind of the, the point where I was like starting to grasp how uh, washes and stuff worked. And you know, I was trying to edge highlight and trying to push myself. Now, before I keep going, I just want to say one thing. If you're new to painting, you have a tool available to you as well. And I know this sounds very obvious, but YouTube, there's so many great artists out there with tutorials about everything. No matter what, there's like everything you want, apart from brown hair. Anyway, so that was YouTube, do it. Okay, so the next mini was a dwarf from the Anvil of Doom. Uh, fourth edition kit, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, fourth edition or fifth edition. I think it's maybe fifth edition. Anyway, I'll look it up and I'll put it here. But anyway, this mini um, I got by itself without the Anvil of Doom itself. So he's like the Rune Lord, I guess, for the Anvil of, Anvil of Doom. Uh, and he's actually the name of this channel. So this is the guy I named my channel after. I just thought it was such a cool name. And I remember seeing this mini when I was younger and I was like, that's such a cool mini. So cool. But anyway, um, I learned a lot with this one. Uh, this is where I kind of um, started to, to get a grasp on uh, lighting. I know it doesn't look like I did, but what I started, when I was painting this, I was putting on the colors and I realized like, hey, the helmet will need to have a, a bit of a different tone, like a bit, uh, you know, lighter on top and darker down the bottom. I also tried to get my free hand on and that was another thing I tried to do here with the cape. I had like a little zigzag on the bottom of the cape there and it was pretty, you know, pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was good fun this one. So yeah, this is the, this is the guy that got me going. Uh, he's a great little mini and one day I will repaint him. I'm gonna uh, dunk him in the acetone and give him uh, a new paint job. Then I painted three Wood Elf Tree Dudes. Uh, these guys here, these Dryads, uh, they were good fun. Nothing really I learned with these ones. I just learned how to do some washes and whatnot. Um, I kind of mixed my own washes with these ones using browns. Um, and also that like the medium that Games Workshop supplies. You can use water, I guess. Uh, probably not makes it a little bit thicker. But anyway, um, I learned how to do washes with that. So it is good fun to learn how to make, uh, to do your own washes. So that's one thing I learned with that. You can make your own washes, which are pretty, you know, pretty handy. I then painted this guy and this guy here, it's a pretty cool mini. Uh, it's the Lich Priest from the Tomb Kings. So this thing here was a fine cast model and it just destroyed me. There was holes in it. Uh, it was just, uh, it was disgusting. It took me a long time to try to get it to a standard that I liked. I used green stuff on it for the first time, which was a bit tricky for me because I didn't really know it. Um, but yeah, it was a nightmare. It was, and now I, and the thing is, now I know why people complain so much about fine cast. I heard a lot of stuff when I first, you know, got into it and that was fine cast. And then yeah, fine cast. Seriously, it is the pits. So 
it's it's not that fun. So what I did learn with this one was glazing, and I went onto a Duncan Rhodes uh, tutorial about weapons and glazing. It, this was another little breakthrough moment for me. It kind of like clicked. I was like, oh, that's how you do it. You know, lifting the brush at the end, and 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 you know when you're, when you're putting it on, wherever you want the paint thickest is that's where your paintbrush leaves. So that's what I kind of learned with there. So make sure you're getting on YouTube if you want to start learning power weapons and practice it. It's it's all about practice. This isn't perfect. This is a terrible example, but. It was slowly where I started to learn that. And this is the fifth edition High Elf Mage I have. Now this was my biggest breakthrough moment pretty much up to this point. I know I keep saying that, but this mini here was the one that kind of pushed me to the next, I feel like my next like level. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand things a bit more. And what I learned with this one was how to do power weapons. My, um, my true metallic metal, I got a little bit better. I also gave this one um, a few little cool little stars around the back of it on the cape. Speaking about washes, this guy here is my first Skaven I ever painted from uh, Hero Quest or Warhammer Quest. Uh, it was good fun. I just gave him a big dollop of Agarax Earthshade and then I went ham on it. Um, it was meant to be red, but it turned into kind of like an orange, and I feel like it looks like Master Splinter of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, next here we are is another batch paint from hell, it was a nightmare. But if this one doesn't hit you in the nostalgia berries, I don't know what will. It's the white lines of Christ from the High Elves. Learning how to paint white, which was an absolute nightmare. And it still is a nightmare for me painting white. Ugh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. And obviously, you know, using gray instead of white. Yeah, but I don't know why it doesn't compute in my small little brain. Also with the faces, I spent a lot of time on each face. I know it doesn't look like it again, but I did spend a lot of time on each face. It's all about little wins as well. So I think painting the faces first for me uh, is important because then I can kind of, I, I give it like a story and I can kind of see who they are and whatnot and then I build off that. The champion for me is my favourite one out of the whole batch. I love it. Um, it's just, and like, you look at the silhouette of this mini, it's a beautiful skull, a beautiful mini. Some people said to me they don't like this one or don't like these white lines, Chris. they like the newer models. The newer models are cool, but I do like the classics. And they're all metal and they feel really good in your hand. So this is my first Age of Sigma mini. My missus bought me this one for my birthday last year. Uh, it's a Lumineth uh, Stone Mage. It was actually kind of fun to paint. It's a bit of like a palette cleanser because I just did that batch paint for those uh, white lines of Christ and then I went on to this one. And I wanted to kind of push myself with this one and see what I could do. So with this one here, I learned uh, how to paint bone. Um, I was glazing. Um, with the base, you know, that was one thing I learned with the base. I went outside, I got sand and rocks and had fun with the base and, you know, uh, try to experiment a little bit and try to tie it all back together. But anyway, this is the first Age of Sigma mini I painted. Grom Brindle, uh, the White Dwarf, uh, was really good fun to paint as well. I love this mini. Uh, with, with the blue and the, and the, the beer mug, he's, he's a little badass and I really, really love him. So this one was fun to paint. And that's one thing you should always do is have some fun with your minis. Make sure you're always having fun. Um, if you've gone through like, you know, a bit of like a, a painter's block and you've, you've been down, and I, I go through them all the time. I, I like, man, I feel like every mini I'm, I get depressed with, that take too long. Um, have a fun one ready. Have the fun one sitting there waiting for you. That's, you know, that's the number one thing you can do. Next up, another Age of Sigma model. Um, whatever it is, I've got the name, but I'll put it down here. If it was a Warhammer Fantasy model, I'd know the name, but anyway, it was pretty much using contrast paints only. And as I said before, it's always important to try push yourself, um, do something different. And I tried really hard to use contrast paints only because I saw a lot of tutorials using contrast paints only. Um, a lot of glazing, a lot of pulling my hair out. And this one only really took me about eight hours to do. Yeah, that's actually pretty long, maybe. But anyway, now this is the model where I kind of turned a corner, I feel, in uh, my painting. And this is where all those little wins and little lessons I learned came, uh, you know, came full circle. And I was like, okay, I've got enough lessons in my arsenal to, to know what I'm doing next. So I got this old Mordheim mini. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, Anur. Uh, the Sword of Twilight, and this is one of my, uh, sorry, I, don't, I know it's one of my favorite minis, but I don't know how to pronounce the name, but he's uh, such an awesome sculpt, and it comes from Mordheim, and I absolutely love it. Um, but this guy here, you know, you could paint him as a wood elf or a high elf. In the lore, it states that he's kind of like, you could be a prince from, you know, the woodland realm to whatever it was, to, you know, from, uh, from uh, Ulthuan or whatever. Doesn't really state where he's from. I painted him high elf colors, obviously, because I'm a high elf boy, uh, through and through. Now people are going to say this to you, you can use any size brush. 
And it is true, you can use any size brush, you can use, you know, if it's a size one or whatever. So I have shaky hands and it's probably because I drink too much coffee, but I can't use a size one brush for eyes. I don't know why. It, I always get little blotches here and there. For me, I'm a little, trying to be a perfectionist. So using those smaller brushes really did help me. So the next one, all the Wood Elf fans will love. It's a classic um, Orion model. Uh, this originally came in like, you know, on the box art, it came in like a kind of like a Caucasian uh, skin tone, but I opted in for the green skin tone, uh, just like the newer renditions of this model. Um, it was good fun to paint. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I kind of tried to give the skin a bit of texture to the muscles and whatnot. I felt like I was painting the Incredible Hulk a little bit, but um, I feel like it came out pretty cool. Um, used a bit of glazing on the cape and um, had a pretty fun time with this one as well. Uh, even with the base, um, I used cork for the first time and built up some cork to try and make the base a little bit more dynamic and gave it a little bit of, bit of a bigger, bigger base as well. Um, but yeah, I feel like this one turned out pretty cool. The face as well turned out okay. And yeah, it was, it was uh, good fun painting this one. And the next one, this is my favorite mini I've ever painted. Uh, and I feel like it's one of my best minis I've ever painted. This guy here is a fifth edition um, high off uh, Archer Champion champion with a bow um, and it was one of the best models I feel like I've painted so far uh, just from the skin tone to the uh, to the, the sword as well I found a pretty cool um, little tutorial and I feel like uh, this is the best one I've ever done um, and I know it's a few minis back and I, I don't know maybe I got worse and I'm, get, I'm getting worse but this one here felt really good and I've even did a bit of blending and whatnot and you know gave it pops of color and what uh, I learned with this one was to really take my time again Take my time, it's not a race at the end of the day. Just have fun with it, really, you know, put the effort in and when you finish, you'll, you'll feel really good about it. Okay, so here is my Wood Elf Blade Guard Champion and uh, I, got a, a, I got inspiration from a, a person on Instagram called Wizards and Whiskey, give him a follow. He's got the coolest page for um, anything like retro Warhammer, you know, he's got like, He's got these really cool color schemes, all the, the you know the hard edge highlighting. He's just really and he's a really nice guy. So maybe give him a follow up. Put his little thing down here. Um, now what I learned with this one is yellows aren't that hard if you have this color. Uh, bronze flesh tone. Go out and get it. Use it as your base coat and then go up from there. It's it just saved my life. This one here. It's an absolute gem of a paint and I love it. So the next one, um, I did paint these two apart, but I'm just gonna put them together. These are my Wood Elf War Dancers. Again, with my Wood Elf, I try to go for the greens and uh, yellows. I feel like they work really well together. Uh, and yeah, you know, with these ones, what I learned, um, what I tried to do was I, I came up with my own uh, hair color schemes. I, as I said before, I couldn't find a brown tutorial. Um, I did find a kind of a red hair tutorial, but I didn't have the paint. So I made, I mixed up my own paints with this one and tried to do it by myself. Um, it's not that not as hard as you think it would be. Definitely give it a crack if you if you ever if you ever like stuck and you don't know what to do next. Um, th this one here, yeah, I, I I went for it and I feel like it, it paid off in the end. As you can see, there's two different color green pants. Obviously, I did them two. I did these ones like like a model apart, but I just wanted to put them together because they're in the same unit anyway. But um, yeah, you know they these turned out okay, and um, I actually felt more confident going into Olden Demon, painting my Olden Demon Mini because I painted these two before. Next up, Drong the Hard, the King of Kazathrund, bloody hates High Elves. He would be my mortal enemy, but I love the little guy. He's beautiful, just a, such a cool sculpt with a Warhammer, you know, absolutely amazing. Uh, with the beard, I had so much fun with this one. This is another fun one. And this is what I, um, as I said before, with uh, the, the Grom Brindle. I don't know why, but for some reasons I have fun painting dwarfs. I love painting them. They're kind of like my palette cleanser. Maybe eventually these might become my new models that I paint. You know, uh, sorry, after I finish my elf army, maybe I'll start a dwarf army. I don't know. I really do love them. I love the sculpts. I love they're small and they take a, like a less amount of time. They are really good fun. So next up, uh, it has to be one of my favorite minis of all time. Um, it's Eltharia and the Blind, and this thing was so hard to find. Uh, I think I did a video telling you guys about how hard it was to find, but when I found it, I had to get it. I paid too much, but it was worth it because I love this mini. Um, this one here was kind of a, a bit of a disappointment for me because I feel like I didn't do as well as I could. Um, I put so much effort to it. I put so much effort into it, and I feel like I didn't get what I wanted out of it. Um, you know, it turned out okay. It was nothing special, um, but... I think the one thing I learned, and with this one here, I tried to go by myself 
And what I mean by that is usually I have like a reference image up and it doesn't even matter. Like, so even if you have something and you're gonna paint it different colors, it's always good to have the reference image up. Like that could be the box art or someone else's painting um, of it. It's always good to have that there because sometimes you can't make out what things are. I found that the mold wasn't that good and it was, you know, uh, the detail was kind of lost with this mini. So I didn't, and I didn't have a reference image, so it made it a little bit harder for me to know what things were here and there. Um, and it kind of it kind of shows and you know you have your, your really good minis then you have your bad ones and that's just all part of the process i believe and this one here wasn't my best and it's sad because it's my absolute favorite mini but what that means is because it's a steel model i get to go back and i get to paint it again I'm just going to dip it in the acetone and i'm going to paint it again eventually one day so i did try some glazing on this one um, and I tried to make it look really dynamic. The pose is amazing on this mini. It's an absolute amazing mini, but I feel like I didn't do it justice. So my second to last mini before we wrap this up is uh, my first 40K mini I ever painted. And I got caught up in recently in the, the Dark Angels drama with the line coming out. And I was like, oh my God, if I'm gonna paint 40K, I wanna paint a Dark Angel. Cause I started reading all about their lore and whatnot. And um, you know, fell in love with them, uh, but yeah. I found this guy on eBay and I had to get him. He was in pretty bad nick when I got him. He was like covered in glue and all sorts of shit, but I stripped him back and I had some fun with this one. I actually went away on holidays before I painted this one and I came back and from holidays and I painted this one and I really took my time with it. Uh, what I learned with this one was greens as well. I went back to, you know, painting greens and I tried to, I tried to give it a bit more depth and uh, a bit more feeling and, and with the feathers as well, I took my time on the, on the headdress and um, it was hard. I thought to myself that painting Space Marines was going to be easy. I thought it was just like slap the paint on, edge highlight it, um, which I guess you could do, but I wanted to give it a little bit more. So, you know, this was a lesson as well that sometimes the simple things are really, really hard to achieve. Maybe let me know down in the comments what you think of this guy. I do want to paint some more 40k stuff, but I feel like I'm just stuck in a fantasy land in the past. I don't know why, I just love fantasy so much and it's so hard for me to get, a, get into 40K. I do love the lore though, I gotta admit, but when I see the minis, they don't just they don't do it for me as much as uh, you know, like the high elves, the wood elves, or any of those type of factions, even the dark elves or dwarves or you know, I don't know. It just the um, Warhammer fantasy really gets me going. So these three little filthy Warhammer halflings. Uh, from the Lumpen Croups, Fighting Cocks uh, Brigade or whatever it is, little box set They're from the Dogs of War range. Um, when I saw these guys, so I remember being young and seeing these guys and be like, oh man, they're so cool. And then I saw them on eBay recently and I jumped on them. I had to get them. I, I want to get more. So eventually I'm going to, you know, I want to build a whole little little unit of these guys, which I will do, but they're very hard to find. And when I saw them on eBay, I had to get them. You know, when you when you start out, everything takes a long time. Well, I feel like it does for me because I try to put as much effort in as I can. These guys here, I got quicker. I got much faster. I just kind of um, smashed them out. You know, they're not the most perfect painted minis, but I feel like you know they're at, a, at an okay standard. Um, and yeah, they were lots of fun. So anyway, there's one more mini to go, but I'm not going to show it this week. I'm going to show it next week. It's my Olden Demon uh, entry, and it's probably the best mini I've painted. I've really taken my time with this one, and I can't wait to show you guys. So I'll slap a video on next week with that one. Uh, I did do a video recently uh, of, of it, like when I started painting it. Uh, it's this uh, Warhammer Quest Wood of War Dancer, um, and I'll show it next week. But for now, yeah, that was everything. So a quick little recap. What did I learn um, in the six months of painting? And it's lots of things. Uh, the first thing is get on YouTube, take a look at tutorials, um, expand your horizons, listen to what people have to say and um, really take it in. And also study other people's miniatures. It's really good to study other people's miniatures, I find. Next one, thin your paint down, just do it. It's not that hard. I know you're gonna put some more coats on, but I feel like I wish I did that for the start, from the very start, because the first few you can see how lumpy they are. But yeah, thin your paint down. Really obvious thing, and they say everyone says it, so just do it. So another thing, as you probably heard, weapons are important. Uh, make sure you take your time with your weapons. Learn to do your non-metallic metal. Learn to do your true metallic metal. Um, those things, you know, they really do draw the eye. So definitely, you know, take your time with those things. And the faces as well. Learn how to do your faces. It might be worth just jumping on eBay and grabbing some uh, mini 
you know, heads, the old space marine heads, and just, and just having them there and just learning how to paint with them and taking a few tutorials, learning how to paint eyes. Another thing that I think is important, learning how to glaze, is not too hard. And once you wrap your head around it, you'll, you know, it'll, it'll benefit your minis. You'll start to notice that, hey, you know, you, you can do more fun things and have way more fun with, with painting. Uh, so yeah, definitely learn how to glaze. The main thing is, yeah, have fun. Have fun and be a part of the community. Um, me getting into the space and learning, trying to learn how to paint to a K stand in the last six months has been a whirlwind. Um, I've made so many new friends along the way. It's been amazing. It's been an amazing experience. So yeah, thank you very much for being here, guys. I really appreciate you guys sticking around that long. I hope you're still here. Um, but anyway, next week I'll put a video up of my Olden Demon entry. Uh, so stick around for that one. If you could, subscribe. That would be great. I would be very appreciative of that. If you throw a thumbs up, that'd be awesome as well. So take it easy, guys. I'll see you soon. Cheers.